We passed a lot of bad milestones when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic. When the first you know, thousand people died, 100,000, half million. These are all terrible, terrible things. Passing the death tolls of wars. Well, now we've passed the worst pandemic in not just recent history, but effectively like the history that we remember and have logged. Um, we've passed the 1918 flu pandemic. Uh, now that was uh, referenced quite a bit by people like Donald Trump as uh, that was really bad. We're not anything like that. Well, now we have actually passed more deaths, 676,000 deaths from the current pandemic. The uh, 1918 pandemic killed about 675,000. Now, uh, granted, the US population was smaller back then. So proportionally, not as many people have died. We'll get to those numbers. But you should also bear in mind that these are all just sort of estimates, both for 1918 and for today. It's likely that they're being undercounted. There were poor records back in 1918, as well as a lack of understanding what was causing some of the deaths. Um, imagine how difficult, they're doing a terrible job of contact tracing now. Think about how they were doing. In 1918, uh, but also bear in mind that it is entirely likely that something like 20 to 25 percent of those dying uh, from COVID-19 are not being counted in the U.S. Their deaths are being logged as something else. In the end, though, the 1918 flu killed about one in every 150 Americans. More than one in 500 Americans has died of COVID-19, so a measurable percentage of the population. Uh, Nina Turner, it uh, it continues to this day. It's not getting better. We're about as bad as we've ever really been. Yeah, and we also have to keep in mind that in you know 1918, the vast uh, difference between uh, the technology that we have and the science that we have over time, uh, we do not have to uh, or should not be uh, dealing with. Uh, COVID to this magnitude, we need more people. We got to tame it. That's really, let me make a long story less long. We got to tame COVID and there will be multiple ways to do it. We'll come, we'll find out new information is being processed, you know, and that's what the science is about. That is what an understanding is about. But what we do know right now is that masks help to slow down the spread. We also know that we do have the vaccine to also be able to slow down the spread. And so we need people to actually, and this is actually something, John, that people can participate in to help slow down the spread so that we can tame this thing. We got to get to herd immunity. And it's hard to get there because you got all of these conspiracy theories out there. You got people propagating stuff. They ain't got MD the first. They ain't got no MD the first, <laughs> yet they are steering people in the wrong direction. So I'm asking people, yes, doing your own research is smart. I would never tell people not to do their own research, but we do have some technological advancements at our disposal that our predecessors did not have. Do your yeah. research, talk to your medical professionals, get the vaccine, wear the mask. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we um, you're, to, you're totally right. I mean, look, the monoclonal antibodies and all that, ready access to masks and gloves and all that. But the tech was not always to our benefit. I did some research, by the way. Did you know that in 1918, there wasn't a single household in the United States that got Fox News Channel? Not one. <laughs> so that was a benefit that they had over us. <laughs> um, in any event, uh, Dr. Howard Markle, University of Michigan physician and medical historian says, I think we are now pretty well done with historical comparisons. Well, I, I guess unless we reach one, one in 150 Americans having died. I mean, we've already passed the Civil War, let alone Vietnam. I mean, we get a Vietnam every month basically at this point. We are getting a 9-11 every one and a half days again. And nobody really seems to care, so bear that in mind. You know how bad it is? I saw this headline, this is crazy. COVID deaths caused Alabama's population to shrink for the first time last year. More people died than were born thanks to the pandemic. 67,714 Alabamans died, only 57,641 um, were born. And the, and the number who died of COVID is bigger than that gap. If not for COVID, their population would not have shrunk. So that's fun. Anyway, um, I wanna show you the updated numbers because uh, I, I just sort of assumed, you know, lagged indicators and all that. By the time I came back, 
will will have been freaking out for a while. So the cases will have been going down. So the deaths will start going down. Well, if you look at this chart, the cases have been sort of steady for a bit now, a few weeks. But if you look at the deaths, they're up 51% over the past two weeks still. Nearly 2100 deaths a day on average. And honestly, I can't even conceive how that's possible. Not just because we know so much more than we did about how it's transmitted and all that. But yeah. so many people are vaccinated. It is a monumental accomplishment that we could still transmit COVID at the rates that we are at this point, getting 2100. You know, I remember a couple of weeks ago, cases started going up. Maybe it was a month ago. Cases started going up as I started tweeting about it. And I would get these jackasses who would tweet me about, yeah, how many deaths are there? And I would be like, well, you know, like on average about 500, which seems really bad. It's weird that that doesn't bother you. But they were like gloating that it was only 500. Well, now we're back up over 2100. So I don't know, are, are you entertained now, randos on Twitter? Have we finally reached a level that uh, that that will merit a little bit of amazement? So anyway, I, I you know, there's no real point here, Nina, but I'm just shocked that it could be this bad. I'm with you. Why do we have to have get deaths to get people's attention? The goal is to prevent the deaths. Duh, so that's one point. Understanding that viruses are older than human existence, they're going to mutate. And so the science is trying to keep up with the different variances that are inevitable. So that is, and, and so until, if and until, this is something that everybody can participate in. And those people who are unwilling to get the vaccine, those people who are willing to wear a mask most of the time, you know, especially when you're in large gatherings, you're just being selfish. If you don't want to do it for you, do it for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Do do it to help us tame this virus. And we got to tame it, not just in this country, but all over the world. And then my third point, John, hospitals are overwhelmed. So let me put this memo out here. Even for, let's just say you got to go in for a routine checkup or you get an emergency that has nothing to do with COVID. To the extent that the hospital system is overrun because of the pandemic, there's a domino effect that has an impact on every other thing within our medical system. And I mean everything, routine checkups to if you have an emergency not related. So we cannot escape the responsibility that all of us hold to be able to do what we individually and collectively can do to tame the damn virus. Yes. It's infuriating, John. I mean, it's absolutely inferior. I'm talking about folks who can do something. And then my last point to my last point to my last point, industrialized nations need to stop hoarding the vaccine. So that poorer nations can at least get their first shot. Because that's yep. driving me crazy too. To know that there are so many countries where people have not even gotten their first shot because of nations like ours and others who are hoarding the vaccine. Cut it out. This is a worldwide, that's why it's called a pandemic. We need yep. worldwide action starting at home. Don't get me wrong, charity starts at home and spread abroad. And the United States has to be a leader in that and other industrialized nations to make sure poor nations get the vaccine as well. And now is a good time to push for it because Biden's at the UN. Biden has not been supportive of the US doing what it can to actually make sure that people around the globe get vaccinated. So now would be a good time. A couple other little bits of news on the pandemic though, just so that you keep updated. White House COVID-19 response coordinator Jeff Zients announced yesterday that the Biden administration will allow fully vaccinated travelers from around the world to enter the US beginning in November. Um, I have a follow up question, why would they want to? Uh, I don't know, we'll see if he gets back to us, but they are allowing it. And Pfizer and BioNTech's coronavirus vaccine has been judged to be safe and effective in children aged five to 11 at a lower dose than adults receive, at least according to the company as a result of a pediatric pediatric trial. So congratulations to Fox News, your rundown is now set for the rest of the week. (laughs) The fact that they've tested this and it's okay for kids, their heads are exploding and that's all that they'll talk about, I suppose. But anyway, it is theoretically good news if you'd like your kid to not get COVID in the near future. Just like we have 
other mm -hmm. vaccines, polio. You know, let us not forget the vaccines that children must take before they can enter school. Yep. We're just at another yep. phase of that. We got to think about this in that way. How many lives have been saved because there was a polio vaccine? Yep. And yep. other childhood diseases, mumps, measles, rubella, all of that stuff. Yeah, and those were not controversial. Although again, yeah. I will refer you to my research. Had there been Fox News 70 years ago, perhaps they would be. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.